What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a tight, polished little 4X title called the Pegasus Expedition. I don't normally play 4X games. I'm usually not a big fan of kind of map staring simulators like Europa Universalis or Hearts of Iron or any of those kinds of games where you spend a lot of time just kind of like staring at maps and like moving little, you know, unit cards around and then just kind of letting it play out and seeing what happens navigating and sifting through menus, but I decided to get outside my comfort zone for once and maybe cover something that, like, is kind of foreign to me, I guess. Something that I don't really participate in. Maybe give a new perspective on it. So I'm coming into this more or less as a new player to the genre. I, I don't really play 4X, but the game caught me up and made me want to play it because it's a 4X game that resolves, it revolves around a narrative. And so this is a 4X game that has some pretty heavy RPG and pretty heavy graphic novel influences as well. Like, there's a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of talking, and on one hand, I feel like that might kind of limit the emergent gameplay as it goes on, like it might limit replayability, which I feel is sort of the bread and butter of 4X games. It does draw somebody like me in who's really into RPGs, and so I gave it a chance when otherwise I probably would have just skipped over it, since, like, doing impressions of a game like this is difficult if you don't really play the genre, because I have no reference points by which to judge the game, so today I probably won't be making a whole lot of qualitative statements just because I don't play 4X games. I don't know what a good 4X game has in terms of mechanics and UI and gameplay versus what a bad one does, so I don't really have that reference point from which to judge and sort of levy claims or like complaints or like observations. Instead, we're just going to check the game out here today. And hopefully it turns out to be something you are interested in. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, it comes out fairly soon. I've got a link for you down below in the description. The developers sent over this preview build of like the full game basically so that I could do this. And so anyways, that's where you'll find it down there. On top of that, you can also take a look at my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live any given day of the week, but since this game is very wordy and has a lot of stuff going on, and I'm gonna spend a lot of time explaining things, we should probably get moving, shall we? Let's go ahead and do this thing. In 2262, humanity was at war. A huge sentient and hostile life form known as the Colossals was threatening the Earth, leaving humanity little choice but to start seeking refuge elsewhere. The Pegasus Expedition was the attempt to achieve that. Three powers from the Earth sent their best fleets on expedition, the rest focusing on defending Earth until the expedition would return. The Zeus Link fleet, sent by the European Union, has been put under your command, Director. It is now up to you to make a difference. Officers, soldiers, colleagues, you all know very well why we are here, and what we are about to do soon. First, remember this moment, and remember the stakes. We will risk ourselves on behalf of everything you care about, and everyone you ever knew. And when the time comes, you will be troubled. You will doubt. We all will. At that very moment, remember this. Do your best, do what you can, and it will be enough. It will be enough if anything in our power can be. There's no telling how this is going to end. But in the end, one thing will be certain. That we gave it all we had. Yeah, this is a game where you're not necessarily the good guy. Uh, humanity has been backed into a corner, and we have sent out basically everything we have to the stars to try to make sure that if Earth gets destroyed, we don't lose everything and face our extinction as a species due to the Colossals. Uh, during this experience, we've jumped into another galaxy that we know nothing about, and guess where we're going to get the territory from in order to sp expand humanity's reign? Other alien races. Uh, what she's saying right there about being troubled is really the subtext of the game's narrative. This is a game where you're going to do awful, awful things to secure the future of your own species. Because if you don't do those things, humanity dies. 
And so this is really a game that's kind of trying to narratively push the button. How far are you willing to go for your people? What atrocities will you make other people suffer in order to guarantee that your people do not get erased from the galaxy? Uh, and that's the question that's going to keep coming up over and over and over again as we start interacting with alien races. For right now, this first turn is a little bit of a gimme. All we have to do is move our fleet down to here. I'm not going to do that. And here's why. we got to do some explanation. Uh, we've got our materials up here in the top left-hand corner. We've got normal metals. We've got rare metals. Uh, we have our population, we have our power generation, and we have the happiness of our empire. All of these things are important. Underneath that, we've got our galactic reputation. As I mentioned previously, this is a game about making choices about how severe and how brutal and how nasty you're willing to be in order to secure the future of the human race. And as you do brutal and nasty things, this meter right here is basically the way that the rest of the galaxy is going to view you. The further over to the right you are, the more they view humanity as just a massive threat to be wiped out, and they'll begin to agree with the Colossals. The more you are to the left, the more they see you as honor honorable and uh, amenable, and at the bare minimum, at least you're not like a warmonger or like an exterminator. Uh, basically, if the meter is all the way to the left, they see you as an honorable combatant. You, if you do things like allow their fleets to retreat, for example, that's considered good form. If you give orders to nuke their fleets as they're trying to run away to kill them to the last man so that they don't get back to their systems, repair, and come back and hit you again, that's seen as a tremendous war crime in space. And you're allowed to do all of those things and everything in between, and you'll see what I mean by the time we get further on into the game, but this galactic reputation right here matters. It's going to shift around in the way that you interact and the way that you wage war against aliens. Top right-hand corner, we've got all of our various, I don't even really know what to call them, uh, your officers, basically. You've got admirals, those are the leaders of your fleet. You've got your governors. Uh, governors are assigned to settlements and colonies and give them bonuses. And then operatives are basically spies and diplomats. You send them around to basically talk to other factions, sabotage other factions, uh, conduct guerrilla warfare on other factions, and plant pipe bombs, you know, in their railway systems. You can do all kinds of nasty stuff with operatives. We have our research that's coming on in. We have our research tree right here so that we can get new types of fleets, higher tier ships. Uh, we can make our guys jump and move faster and hit harder. We can upgrade the various brands of ships we have like artillery and frigates and cruisers and carriers and all that kind of stuff. It's not an enormous tech tree, but it is a tech tree. Uh, you can make a super virus if that makes you happy. If you ever wanted to wipe out all alien life in the galaxy by making a super virus, uh, I'd direct you to the Medusa strain. Uh, anyways, uh, that all out of the way. This is our fleet. This is how we look at the galaxy right here. Our fleet is currently being led by uh, Bjorn Niemi. He's got two movement points. That's what those two little dots are right there. I'm trying to explain the systems of the game to you because, in my opinion, this game is under-tutorialized. Uh, so for a 4X game, especially as a new player coming into the genre, this game does a fairly poor job of explaining what you should be doing but more importantly than that, I find that with complicated games, like I play a lot of roguelikes, things like Caves of Cud, Cataclysm DDA, complex games that have a lot of moving parts and a lot of things you need to know if you want to play successfully, uh, tutorials for games should not only tell you to do a thing and how to do it, but games should really, if they've got a really solid tutorial, they should also infuse in the player a solid understanding of why you should do it contextualizing your tutorial is a really good idea, uh, but this game doesn't really have that many tutorials. I've got them turned off right now because they were so sporadic and rare uh, after, like, the first two turns that, like, I just kind of played for four or five hours until I figured the game out by myself. I don't know if four or five hours is a fast acquisition time for somebody new to this genre, but that's approximately how long it took me to get a handle on the game to the point where, like, I know what I'm doing now and I know what my options are. And I think that's not too severe of a learning curve, but it is a bit of a learning curve. Uh, that's, that's why I wanted to do this video, though, is I feel like as a new player, I can offer kind of an outside, ex uh, an outside experience. Because if somebody is really experienced with, like, CK3 and Hearts of Iron and EU and all those games comes on in, this game's going to be really, really simple. They're going to figure it out really, really quickly. Uh, really, all that I can bring to this conversation is the perspective of somebody that doesn't really play games like this, but for whatever reason was attracted to the premise of this game, even though it's outside my wheelhouse. 
Uh, welcome to the Pegasus Galaxy, Director. The Pegasus Expedition has now officially begun. A perimeter around the portal has been formed and the main force is moving through. So far, it's all according to plan. Okay, what now? Right now, we can't stay around the portal for long, so we need to move to the closest star system and form up. Our recon units are already approaching Zoka. Okay, once we're there, we need to set up infrastructure, assess surroundings, and make ourselves permanent. My teams are on the other side, and they've come from they've come through and set themselves up. We'll start making sense of all the information we should already be collecting. Oh, don't worry. We are. That does leave a question of dividing the initial systems between us and the Allies. I presume logistics would demand that... Grand Admiral Perrin, Director, sorry to interrupt, but we've got an urgent transmission from the recon unit in Zoka. What's it about? We've got an important meeting right now. Uh, Ma'am, it's that they've made contact. It took nine hours. Nine hours in the Pegasus Galaxy, and we were at war. They didn't fire warning shots. And we... We weren't going to take it lying down. So welcome to your first combat, Commander. Uh, this is the way that the game you wage war. As you can see, there are many enemy fleets and ships that are flying around, around these planets right here. Uh, and basically this game has kind of a curious combat system. I don't really know how to describe it to people, but we've got our attack group over here, which is basically comprised of all of our carriers and cruisers and fighters and frigates and artillery. And you pick a strategy card. And strategies are divided into two separate categories. There are honorable strategies, and there are all-means-necessary strategies. Um, the honorable strategies, they tend to not really give you that many bonuses, and they tend to be very, very conservative in the way that they engage the enemy. The all-means-allowed strategies tend to give you huge damage bonuses and huge defense bonuses, uh, but they are looked down on by the rest of the galaxy. You're basically using what are considered dirty tricks by the rest of the alien races to win. And so anyways, I don't really care about that because I was raised on Warhammer 40k Imperial propaganda. So like, what is an alien for except to be swept off the map so that we can establish a new manufactorum, you know what I mean? Like, eh, the feelings of aliens don't really matter to me. I'm here to secure the future of humanity. Meh, they'll figure it out. Uh, when, I, when I move, you get out of the way. This is, this is the property of the Golden Throne. So say I. Uh, but anyways, if you care about hurling, hurting alien feewees, you'll probably want to stick to the, uh, the normal honorable strategies. I don't do that because I'm an animal. And so <laughs> anyways, uh, they have divided up into five defense groups. If we choose these strategies, as you can see on the left-hand side, our fleets are going to subdivide into different ways. You have no control over the customization of these fleets, and I think that's kind of a downer. Um, I, I do wish that there was a menu where it had all these cards listed and you could select a fleet and select a card and decide what you want in each battle group for each card, but you can't really do that. It just kind of splits them apart and you make do with what you have. Uh, you can rotate their deployment spots on the map if you desire to do so by clicking and rotating these around. Uh, there will be more or less successful attempts in doing this. And then, basically, these health meters at the top determine who wins. Our fleets are going to duke it out with each other. They're going to punch away at each other. And whoever hits this threshold right here on either meter, they retreat first. That's pretty much it. That's the whole thing. And the outcome to battles in this game can actually vary wildly depending on how you choose to deploy your troops. So be very, very careful. Uh, lightning Strike feels good to me because that puts instantaneous engagement on every single one of these systems so that they can't bring their artillery guns to bear. Artillery units have the ability to fire in between planetary systems and hit your troops while you're already engaged, and they kind of mess with you. And they add a lot of damage without losing health. And so, really, I found that the principal strategy for combat a lot of the time is how can I, how can I minimize their artillery as much as possible, as fast as possible. Uh, so Lightning Strike feels good to me. The only downside to Lightning Strike, I think that Lightning Strike right there is actually a lot more effective because that means we have two separate fleets engaging north, two separate fleets engaging south. We have holdout fleets over here duking it out with these two. They're probably going to get scuffed up pretty well. The other option that we could take is we could go hunting detachments like so 
and we could hit them hard from both sides with a regroup in the center and then a move over to here. But they're going to retreat at 50%, so, like, I don't know if that's necessarily going to matter. But let's, let's do hunting fleets. So, as you can see, our fleets are jumping into the fray. If you zoom in on these fights, they are definitely fighting. You can see the fleets engaging. But there's also active abilities you can use like launching missiles at guys. You see those missiles fly over there and you'll see their health go down. Uh, you can fire missiles, you can fire nukes. Uh, that's generally looked down on. You probably don't want to do it too much. Uh, they tend to get cranky when you use a lot of nuclear weapons. Uh, the galaxy apparently looks down on nuclear bombardment. So what the hell is going on here? We made contact with something. It appears to be sentient or maybe humanoid and operates heavily armed space vessels. They fired on sight and we returned fire. We destroyed a small unit in the Zoka system. Probably one of their garrisons. So whatever they are, we're at war with them. Uh, what would you do if an identified fleet appeared out of nowhere in your star systems? They probably are terrified right now. I just hope we didn't start something irreversible. It's unfortunate, but I don't see how we could have done anything differently. Well, first contact is always tense. Well, our only experience is from the Colossals, and they never attempted to negotiate at all. So far, we've only had these kinds of contacts in space. See? And that's what the Emperor realized. He realized every time we go out in space and we extend a hand in friendship, we got it cut off. See? The Emperor was right. Let the galaxy burn, brothers. Uh, anyways. So what now? I still don't have my people here, but I'd like to send a team to investigate the remains of the Zoka system. Do what you can. In any case, Zoka is now secure and we need to move in and start setting ourselves up as soon as possible. That hasn't really changed. Alright, so here we are. Uh, they've finally given us free reign of the galaxy for a little bit. Uh, you can see that our fleet is a little bit beat up. It's got a little bit of an upset tummy. Uh, we can repair these fleets. One of the things that I noticed is kind of odd, though is that, like, repairing fleets can be kind of expensive in this game, so so watch out for how much it's costing you to repair a fleet. Uh, right now we control two systems. We have Zaire and we have Zoka. Uh, one thing that we can do in these areas is we can build transit stations. Uh, basically, transit stations allow us to fast travel, which allows us to use a lot less movement points to get further around our own territory uh, without getting bogged down. It allows us to rapid deploy and figure out where the enemy's at and what they're doing very, very quickly. Uh, we probably want to build one of those right about now. And so I'm going to build a transit station right here. It's only going to cost us a little bit. Technically, I could build one up here in Zaire as well, but our allies uh, from America and from, I forget who the other guys are, the Middle East, uh, they're going to invade here, and they're going to invade here on the next turn of the storyline. So, like, I don't really need... We're going to clear out the top corner of the galaxy pretty quickly. If you wanted a panned out view of how big the battle map is, pretty big. Uh, when I played for about three or four hours, I had discovered pretty much everything in this little pie slice right here. And I knew what empires controlled everything out to, like, right here. And this area was like a dead zone where I had no idea what was going on. I hadn't really sent any scouts out there yet. Uh, but anyways, the game does use jump gates. Some people are going to like this, some people are not going to like this, uh, but effectively everything is warp webbed. Uh, so like, it would be very, very difficult for me to leapfrog an enemy territory and go around. Like, you actually have to use the webway to get from point A to point B. For the moment, it would take two turns to repair this guy. He's only got like one ship that's really busted up. I don't know if it's worth it. Like, we could, but it can't fight, defend, or do anything for a couple of turns if we do that. And I think on the next turn, the allied invasion is going to start. So even though this even though this fleet's a little bit crippled, I think we could probably still use it as, like, a cleanup crew. And then, like, wait till later before we fix everything up. Well, the good news is the Roar Clan didn't hit us back, so that's always nice. Although they did build six defensive guns inside that system. That's what those little pips are up above. Uh, we can build those as well. We just haven't gotten there yet. This was it. We were here with very limited time and nearly endless pressure from home. For better or worse, this was our final plan we would soon get to see how it would play out.
All right, our allies are moving through the portal and occupying nearby star systems. Very good. So, we've surveyed Zoka, and it's not a paradise. Our planets are toxic, unstable, hot, radioactive. Uh, I think we get the picture. We do need a foothold, pleasant or not. The second wave is almost ready to move, and we should immediately send them to occupy further systems. That means actively causing more conflict with that new civilization that we've met, yes? It does. We need territory, and they haven't even mounted a retaliatory attack. One could say that they actually appear kind of weak, a state that we should take advantage of. And having some depth in our defenses wouldn't hurt either. It certainly wouldn't. So, Director, second wave is ready. Awaiting orders. Very well, give them the go-ahead. And so on this, we're going to launch a full beachhead into Roar Clan territory. Uh, we are basically going to sweep them off the map at the direction of the AI Director. I didn't send those fleets over there. This is just part of the storyline. And so anyways... Over here, what are we looking at? He's got a 43 power fleet and a 31 power fleet. We've got a 91 and a 66. Ah, uh, I think the 66 should be able to take care of the 43. Now, how combat works in this game is you pick one fleet, they pick one fleet, and your fleets duke it out mano a mano. Uh, there's no sending in both of our fleets at the same time, all four fleets, both enemy and ally, for like a massive scrum in space. I don't know why they chose to do it that way. I think that would have been a lot more fun and a lot more interesting and a lot more spectacle-laden. Uh, but basically, you pick a fleet, they pick a fleet, you fight each other, whoever wins, they fight the next fleet in the list, so on and so forth. And that's how combat works. Uh, do yourself a favor and don't use auto battle. Auto battle works most of the time, but sometimes it does really dumb stuff that allows like a 30 power fleet to wipe out like 100 power fleets. And so like, my advice would be maybe don't use the auto-resolve, and if you're gonna use the auto-resolve, maybe save before you do it. That's just been my experience so far. Uh, yeah, let's send the... Actually, they have defense guns here, though. The defense guns may mess with this. I'll just shoot more nukes. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's my strategy, is I'll just fire way more nukes. Uh, so they are very spread out. So really we have two options here. We can go with Cautious Advance, which deploys two fortified battle groups to the opposite end of the system, but they retreat at 50%. So basically Cautious Advance is you trying to preserve your troops as much as possible while inflicting damage. Ideally what we would want to do with this strategy is we want to jump in, launch as many nukes and as many missiles as possible, then jump out. Uh, so that we inflict maximum casualties on them while really only taking 50% casualties ourselves. That would, that would be really what we would use this for. Uh, we can go full frontal assault, which means that we deal a lot more damage, but we also take a lot more damage. Okay. Uh, we could go staged assault, although I don't know how it'll go. Or we could just go full invasion, basically, and hope that things work out. Our sixth group is kind of scuffed. And they do have defensive stations. Let's do cautious advance. I, I don't normally like conservative strategies like this in combat. But I do feel like it's an okay idea. Where are their defense stations at? Are they like on every single planet? They don't have one there. They have two right there. Okay. Okay. Two right there, and none right there. Where are the two guns that they're missing? There's two guns missing from my uh, calculations here. Hmm. Well, either way, jump in, fire as many nukes as you possibly can. The goal here is not to win. The goal is just to give them a big, fat black eye. Uh, so we're dealing a lot of damage right there. It looks like the orbital defense guns are already firing. I don't have the option to launch nukes yet. Oh, it's because the conservative strategy doesn't have by all means necessary. I mean, we do seem to actually kind of be dealing a lot of damage, though. Like, I think if we had actually invaded uh, with a by all means necessary strategy, I think we would have pistol whipped them off the map. All right, Bailey, clean up. Clean up on Isle Alien. Uh, yeah, they're pretty beat up right now. Uh, let's just go... We'll go Lightning Strike, I guess. Lightning Strike is fine by me. 
we're going to be launching a lot of missiles. So all these battle groups are going to be in here. Uh, basically, I'm going to try to harass and nuke the interior parties so that they get hurt really, really badly. And as you can see, the missiles have already knocked their health down by a considerable volume. Keep launching missiles at the ones that are on the interior to try to get them to retreat. Shock and awe, baby. Shock and awe. Give him some of that Uncle Sam salt and pepper. Although I don't know what the EU version of Uncle Sam is. Like, I know it's it's like John Bull, isn't it, for the UK? But, like, does the entire EU have kind of like a, like a mascot for everybody? You know what I mean? Like, the UK has John Bull. Uh, the United States has Uncle Sam. Like, you get what I'm saying? Does the EU have that? I don't know. Anyways, we won that system. Uh, we also invaded over here. This should be an easy cakewalk. It's 80 versus, like, 30, so we should be able to basically kick the bejesus out of these guys from the moment we land. Uh, we'll engage directly on either side. Actually, I don't want cautious advance, though. That could actually mess this up very badly. Uh, let's go... What can I do here? I like that flavor right there. That flavor sits right with me. Uh, we will go hunting detachments. Hit them. These are garrison fleets, so they should be a little bit weaker. And they should route a little bit faster. They start out at like 20% health because they're just like, you know, provincial garrison fleets that are undersupplied and underlooked after. Yeah, it looks like we've already got them on the retreat. People are already jumping across the gravity well and chasing them all over the system. Good. We win. Now, be cautious about fleets going across gravity wells from stars. It takes them a lot longer to move around. And then we have a final fight over here. Ow, dude. My cat just jumped into my lap and missed and clawed the bejesus out of my shoulder. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. I'm glad we're friends. This is one of those moments where I really feel thankful for your friendship. Thank you. Uh, we have another invasion fleet over here. It is a 50 power fleet against a 53 power fleet. We can win it, I think, but we'll have to be really aggressive in our deployment of war crimes. <laughs> I wish I, I, I wish I had a better synopsis for you. Uh, we're, we're going to have to commit some war crimes here. It's just the way that it goes. Uh, we can deploy all together to a side. And these guys still have their full nuclear arsenal. So we could wipe this group, nuke the hell out of these guys. Uh, but these guys are fighting to the last man. So this may get a little bit intense. Like, they are not leaving the system. The other option is we could try to line up four battle groups on either side of the system. I do think that that's a pretty tight grid right there for a really aggressive invasion. Yeah, let's do it, and then we'll go run them down strategy. They're fighting to the last man anyway, so... That'll give us a, a big old grip. You guys go ahead and launch nukes at these guys so that we can regroup the battle force as soon as possible. Very nice. And uh, we should be able to win down here. Fire nukes at them, please. Uh, we are actually severely losing. Like, badly losing. Wow. I've always won that battle. Apparently, there's a little bit of randomness put into it, too. Uh, so now that we have a bit more than the Zoka system Dr. Lorenzo passionately dislikes, we should do something with them. Yeah, I'll skip this dialogue real fast, but this gets us into the planetary exploitation menu. I literally have never lost that last fight right there with that exact same strategy. So there must be some randomization involved uh, in terms of, like, damage numbers and whatnot, because I've, I've fought that fight probably five times in preparation for this video and never lost it. Sucks. Uh, I needed that fleet to win. Uh, we can exploit these planets. We have a quest right now to make non-civilian outposts. And so every planet has attributes. This kind of reminded me of Galactic Civ. And so anyways, this place has rare earth materials. So we're going to put a mining base here. Boom. There you go. Mining base. Done. This place has a toxic atmosphere, uh, which increases our science production. So research base. And then this planet right here has a geological instability. It is a desert world, which will decrease energy production. I don't really want to do anything with this system. 
Oh, never mind. I'm on the wrong one. Unstable magnetic fields. So this place has better mining yields, but it wants me to do three separate buildings. So I'll do a shipyard right here just so the game can be happy with me. Uh, there we go. We have exploited all of our buildings. I'm not, like, stoked about the fact that we lost that fight. I kind of want to do something about that. I've got an 86 power fleet right here. And I've got a 74 power fleet right there. I'm going to repair the 38 power fleet because they're a little scuffed. It's going to take them five turns to feel better. But I'm okay with that. Uh, over here, we have more buildings we can make as well. We have more OM3. Uh, it is a rare earth mine, so we'll go ahead and do that. It's fairly easy knowing what to build in this game. There's really... I, I haven't seen a whole lot of new, like nuance to it yet from playing four or five hours. Like, you look at the bonuses, you put the thing on the planet that, like, capitalizes on those bonuses, and everything seems to work out okay. That's it. That's the secret to building an economy. Economies with Splattercat. Look at place, find bonus, do whatever you want. Uh, we built a mine over here already, right? This one doesn't have any bonuses. So technically, we could build a civilian outpost to get our civilian growth up so that we can replace our crews faster an option or we could push research a little more aggressively I mean either that or we could really focus on making sure we have lots of minerals I'm gonna go with a civilian outpost we don't have any of those yet uh, we also have another buildable planet up here so we need to kind of take care of that you can click this right here to make it auto build if you want uh, and it will just pick based on the bonuses I've checked and I've ran an entire campaign for an hour or so with only auto build and it seems to make okay choices I, I didn't find anything where I was like, what are you doing, game? Uh, this right here has mining bonuses, so industrial center. This one right here has mining bonuses, so industrial center. This planet right here has mining bonuses, so more mining. Apparently, we're going to be spayed. This one also has mining bonuses. All right, well, we're just heavily, heavily mining. We're, we're space dwarves. I am a dwarf and I went through a wormhole. Wormy, wormy hole. Wormy, wormy hole. Uh, over here, we have a ton of planets. Let's take a look at them. Uh, this is a ship graveyard, so our mineral extraction will be better. But energy production is weak on this planet. Things cost more to build, but we get a 50% science bonus. Let's go with a research outpost. We are getting a little bit low on money, though, so maybe I should relax for a few turns. We do have 69 population, though. Funny, funny internet meme number nice. Uh, we should also probably build up our transit system. So I'm going to put a transit station in right there. And I'm going to put in a transit station right there just in prep for the future. We are going to have to do something about this guy but I do think that we should well I gotta wait a couple turns till this fleet's repaired right how many fleets is it gonna take or how many turns is it gonna take five turns so we're gonna be sitting tight for a little bit uh, let's do that I'll tell you what, in five turns, Gyoka's about to get it, all right? I'm about to go upside Gyoka's head in, like, like five turns, bro. In, like, two fiscal quarters, dude. You have no idea what's coming. Uh, our galactic reputation has been noticed. Yeah, if the diplomat's gonna tell us that people are cranky with us because I'm addicted to nukes. Uh, so let's see. Sure, the leadership of the first expeditionary fleet and Al Mustamara have established themselves here in the Veki and Shioko systems, and they want to discuss the situation. They've called a meeting of the Earth War Council. Uh, so, Elodie? Yes, I'll maintain a connection with you throughout the meeting, so we're not making any decisions without your approval. Are we ready to send the Grand Admiral there? Uh, sure, go for it. Welcome, colleagues, to the first meeting of the War Council, representing Al Mustamara of Daras Combine, Admiral Gretel Madan at your surf, uh, service, Admiral Samuel Reed of the First Expeditionary Fleet, good to meet you. I'm Grand Admiral Elodie Perron of the Zeus Link Fleet. I'm the ranking military officer, but not the highest authority. I've heard your interesting command structure. Shouldn't soldiers lead this kind of a military expedition? The military part isn't the whole truth, Admiral Reed. Maybe not, but we've certainly found ourselves fighting for every planet and star, haven't we? 
We've read reports of your first contact, Perone. Not ideal, but hard to avoid. Whatever they are, they hit a soft spot. I don't call it ideal. Based on the bits and pieces we've managed to translate, we're fighting a political entity called the Roar Clan, which is part of a much larger civilization called the Maelstriok. How do the rest of them view us? We haven't made contact with the other clans. This is all based on information we got from our sizable Maelstriok population in the Shioko system. Even better, if they'd want to defend this Roar Clan, they'd already be here, so there's nothing stopping us from taking over everything they have. That appears to be a little excessive. Our needs are excessive. We didn't come here to play. Does the Zeus Link fleet have a stance on this issue? I agree with Admiral Reed. Necessity dictates that we take over what we can. Yes, let's remove pockets of opposition. Very well. Uh, I've still got a few turns, though, until I can get deep up into them pockets. So, like, that's kind of where we live right now. Uh, he can only hit me. Well, he can hit me with 42. We didn't deal nearly enough damage over there. I'm about to repair this fleet, but this fleet is boned. Honestly, it would be cheaper just to rebuild it. We already have a shipyard, right? We need an eagle and two harriers. Oh, is my shipyard not done yet? Do we not have that? Uh, it looks like we only built the power plant, so we got a little bit more time. Let's just rest on our laurels for right now and really hope that the Roar Clan don't attack. If they, if they attack Zoka, it's not going to be great. Like, we'll, we'll pretty much lose the game if they do that, but I need to wait for my economy to spin up. So, And I'm waiting for a fleet to repair over here, too. So it's just going to take a little bit. I could reinforce the garrison on this side. It looks like they're not going to attack. If they were going to attack, they'd do it on the first turn. Uh, so I think they're just going to hang tight. I'm all right with that. Looks like happiness is rising. Uh, something serious apparently needs to be discussed. Uh, let's see here. We built a bunch of outposts. We have infrastructure and production, but it doesn't give us the ability to settle people. And to have facilities of a larger scale, we need people to man those facilities. So we need a place where we can settle the first big wave. We've got a planet on mind. Uh, it's by the Roar Clan and the Maelstriok civilization. Might be a good idea to grab it while they're the only ones hostile to us. It's the Bow system, not far from our current borders. Unfortunately, there aren't any real alternatives. So if we want to set up anything proper here, we need that place and we need it soon. Uh, the Roar Resistant has been resilient at times, but hardly concentrated. Yeah, we got this, dude. We got this. We got this. Uh, so as soon as this fleet is back up and at operational level, uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of it. There's a couple things with the UI I'd like to see with the game. Uh, so the first thing is that repairing fleets is egregiously expensive, and I don't know exactly why. Uh, so basically the way that I thought repairing would work is like the difference between how much health they've lost and back up to the top. It would just take a percentage of the materials of the total ship in order to fix that back up. It does not work like that. Anytime you want to fix your ships, it's basically like buying a brand new fleet. It is super, super expensive. And so anyways, I'm not exactly sure what the rationale was for designing it that way. But it is the way that it is. So a lot of the time, repairing is going to be a really bad idea because it takes too long and it's too expensive. Sometimes it's better just to disband the fleet and you can build like three or four ships per turn. And so if it takes you like seven turns to rebuild your fleet with the repair command, but it would only take you three turns to disband everything and just rebuild from scratch, it costs the exact same amount. So you might as well. Uh, I do think that the repair costs seem a little high. And it sort of removes any point in repairing the fleets. But maybe I'm not experienced enough with the game yet to understand uh, the context in which repairs should be used. Uh, your ships do not regenerate while inside of friendly systems. Also kind of weird. So they will stay just as wounded as they ever were <laughs> while they're over here. Can I build ships yet? I can. Uh, I had an eagle and I think I had two harriers over here. And, like, why not throw in another cruiser? Seems like an okay plan to me. We'll just rebuild these guys. As far as you're concerned, you're at full capacity. As far as you're concerned, you are all at full capacity as well. Your fleets have equipment slots. Uh, you can put things in there that will boost the damage and resistances of different ship types. You can research new ones to make your ships even stronger. Uh, lots and lots of things to fiddle around with in that regard and customize. In addition, I don't know if they still do it, but it says my commanders are level 1. 
Uh, I saw Nucrium play in this game like a year ago, and the commanders leveled up. But none of my commanders have leveled up in the two or three hours that I've played. So I can't tell you exactly how customizable they are once you level them up. I'm guessing you just get to pick between bonuses over here on the side. But I don't know. Um, could be, could not be. Anyways, we're just waiting on repairs and for our infrastructure to build, so I'm just going to hang tight for a minute. I'd also like to see a countdown on repairs. I can't seem to find it for Bjorn right now. Like, he's definitely on repair, but you don't have, like, a number or anything that tells you how many turns he has left until he repairs, and the tooltip doesn't update right here either. So I'd like to see a little number put onto the unit card or something to let you know how long you have until that fleet's going to be operational again. Oh, I forgot to put up technology. Yeah, technology. Uh, let's go for the Pegasus Habitation Protocol, apparently. Uh, your outpost can be upgraded to colonies. Sounds good. Go for it. You can queue up research if that's the thing that you're into. Uh, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to focus on being economical. Uh, so more power and also more mining, basically, is what I would like to see here. Our power grid... A little bit overtaxed, uh, but as long as it doesn't go sub-zero, you should be fine and not subject yourself to any Mortal Kombat. They have a lot of fleets on bow. And again, they're weak little baby fleets, so I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, we could put in some new colonies. I mean, we could continue developing our economy right now. I don't think I've necessarily built on every single planet, especially not in this system. An extreme day and night cycle, which messes with energy production. Really, all that we could put right there would be like a civilian habitation. Uh, this one has rare earth veins, though, so if we can afford it, I would not be against putting in an industrial outpost. That seems okay to me. And this place has natural beauty, which makes people happy. Okay, I feel like we're good on population. I kind of want to keep boosting up my economy. Like, these numbers are getting better to where I can consistently rely on having the materials I need in order to do the stuff that I want. Uh, this fleet is in the process of being rebuilt from the ground up. I can decommission two of the artillery vessels, and then I can assign two more artillery vessels. And I think on this turn, I should be able to invade Gioka. Indeed I can. So it looks like he's all ready to go. Uh, this is going to be a full invasion. Like, we're, we're sending everything at this point. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you can build things in the orbits of these planets, by the way. I didn't really point that out, but there's stations. Uh, every system has station slots. You can put defensive systems. Uh, you can put in satellites that aid the economy. You can put all kinds of things in these slots right here, by the way. Uh, by upgrading the beacon, which is always in the leftmost slot, you make the garrison stronger as well. Uh, so the garrison will get tougher and tougher the higher level you put the beacon up. But later on, beacon upgrades are very, very expensive, so keep that in mind. Uh, we will probably want to take the fresh repaired fleet and send them. We will send you as well. We are going to actively rotate our defense grid like so, because this doesn't need to be defended anymore. And we need to keep one foot on base with all those other places. And it is time for conflict. Our reputation is not so great right now. But that's kind of the way life goes. Uh, let's go ahead and beef for Bo. Round one. Fight! Alright, so they have a layered defense strategy. Pretty common if you have centralized defense guns or exterior defense guns in your outer limits. Uh, basically, they surround themselves around the star and they force you to go through the defensive grid before you can get to them. It can be a little hectic. Uh, I would suggest maybe concentrated force from that side. We can launch nukes at them. 
and we'll go run them down for the 15% damage bonus, and we'll just take it on the chin as far as galactic opinion goes. We'll fire some nuclear missiles at them just to make them feel stingy and unhappy. Uh, they lit off some kind of IED over there. Victory is now imminent on this side, kinda. Uh, we're gonna retreat first, dude. Come on! Push it! There it is! That's what I'm talking about! That's what I'm talking about! Get your land, humanity! Take that over! This right here, your soil! That's what that is! Whose soil is this? Humanity's soil! We pee on it if we have to. Alright, so we have knocked them out of there, and they want me to go to bow. However, I didn't expect to take that in one fight. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the fact that we took that in one fight means that I still have a fleet that's in pretty good shape right now. Just in reserve. These guys are obviously going to have to rebuild. But I'm not upset with the way that that went. I do believe it's not a terrible idea to invade over here, too. Basically land grab and create a beachhead. I don't know what they have in Leoke right there. But if you don't take this stuff over, your allies will. Uh, so, like, the Middle Eastern um, army and the American army, they are super expansionist. Uh, they will be wiping aliens off the map left and right. And so any gap you leave, they will try to occupy. So, like, I kind of want to take this now before it becomes somebody else's stuff. Especially since this appears to be a stopgap in how the enemy can get to me. Yeah, full send it. Alright, so they have done a hold-the-line defensive strategy. I am of the opinion that victory at any cost is the best way we can run this. Did I send the wrong fleet? Why are you guys all scuffed up, man? I thought this was a fresh fleet. Oh, did I move the fresh fleet south instead of over to here? Oh, no. Okay, this might go poorly. Uh, yeah, no retreat allowed. You will bring the Emperor victory, or you will be floating space debris. There's no way out of this. Good luck. I mean, they're militia. This should be a gimme fight. Like, we're killing militia in a system that nobody even wants because you can't even build anything over here. You know what I mean? Like, look, look, oh, look, well, I mean, these ones almost look buildable. I bet, I bet we can get, uh, yeah, by reason, I, I was going to say, I bet we get some kind of technology because these ones have, like, a white border on them or something. Like, I don't know, dude. Uh, but either way, this is the Pegasus Expedition. I hope you guys liked it. I think the game is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's enjoyable. I did run into some bugs, uh, one of them game-breaking while I was playing the game during my three or four hours that forced me to restart. But that was about it. Other than that, everything went smoothly. The game does have a bit of a learning curve if you don't play these kinds of games. But I do think that the narrative experience and the decision-making and the conversations with aliens and with other factions of humanity are very, very entertaining. I think the game maintains a good somber note. Uh, my main concern would be, since the game is so heavily attached to its own narrative, a lot of the appeal to a 4X game is the replayability. And so I would question maybe, would the narrative ultimately limit that major attribute of a, of a, a genre that is expected to be very replayable? Um, I would be interested to hear a response to that, basically. Uh, but that would really be only my main concern with this title because everything else seems to be pretty cool. Uh, this is the Pegasus Expedition. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, Pegasus Expedition, where I got to purge some Xeno scum. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'll be back later. Bye-bye, folks.